Uh, thank you so much for having me, Ralph. My name is Emil Amari. I am the co-founder and CMO at Steadyware Incorporated, where we've revolutionized the medical equipment pathway for hand tremors. So we've invented the world's first battery-free glove designed to reduce hand tremors in Parkinson's and essential tremor. My educational background is I did an MBA at Cornell and Queens. It's a cross-border program. It's an executive MBA degree. So that's like an uh, something that you do a little bit later in your career. And uh, my undergrad was at York University here in uh, Toronto, Canada. Um, and I, uh, I've been working on this company since 2015. Uh, actually, the reason why we started this company was um, both Mark and I, my CEO, we both have essential tremor in our families. We met shortly after graduating from undergraduate uh, degrees at separate schools. We met as neighbors through a friend in common. And uh, we quickly realized that we both had tremors in our families and decided to pursue a solution after realizing that the solutions that were currently available or were available at the time were inadequate. Um, you know, the medications were bolted with side effects. The surgeries were very intrusive. So we decided to take a mechanical approach and we took an idea that we stumbled upon from structural engineering. My CEO is a structural engineer by background. And uh, we approached hand tremors using vibration damping and el elaborated on that using some magnets too, which I'll dive into a little bit further later on. So do you mind if we just jump straight in uh, to some uh, student questions? Of course. Yeah, whenever you guys are ready. That's what I'm All here right. for. Very cool. Some of them were emailed to me. And guys, uh, any, anyone here on the meeting, go ahead and message them in the chat. And we'll let you unmute to ask Emil. So one of the questions was, uh, what kind of advice do you have when it comes to picking, um, picking a mentor? Well, that's a great question. You know, over the past eight years, we've had quite a few different mentors, some assigned to us and some that we've chosen. Um, what we like to look for in a mentor is somebody that's well-rounded and can experience, that has firsthand experience when it comes to the activities that we are seeking. So, you know, if you're looking to get into, you know, finance and accounting, I would definitely look for a mentor who's worked at one of the big four companies like Deloitte. You know, somebody that has a world class experience in the space and has, you know, really jumped through many hoops to get to where he or she got to. And the, the best way to do that is to, you know, sometimes go to these free networking events where these people are speaking at. You'd be amazed by how many of them are actually willing to talk to you. And they're mostly very approachable, like most good leaders. That's great advice. Um, so one of the kids, they wanted to know how how can you, and this was uh, in the description of our event, but they wanted you to touch on the pitfalls of launching a medical device with a startup. Like what what are some of the landmines that 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 uh, you can speak of? Oh, wow. Um, so, you know, hardware is hard. That's what the, that's what the say. That's how the saying goes. So let's start there. Building a hardware company from a country that isn't number one in manufacturing can be tricky. You have to go out and find the right manufacturer, make sure you two jive, you guys get along and make sure that you guys are on the same page. You know, sometimes there could be a language barrier. Sometimes there could be a time time difference. Um, that's one of the big problems that we, co we come across when we're dealing with our manufacturers who are located halfway across the world. Um, so that's on the manufacturing front. Uh, 
When it comes to medical device regulatory and reimbursement pathways, that's a whole other can of worms. You really have to figure out that stuff through a consultant. Um, you know, first you try yourself, but uh, most of the time you're going to need a third party to help you out to navigate through the complicated systems of every single country where you hope to sell. Um, so, for example, our device uh, was we were fortunate enough to be a class one device, which means that all we needed was an FDA registration. And the reason for that was because we have a battery free technology. It's non-intrusive, so it doesn't impact you. And in that fashion, it's also battery free. So it's considered a low risk technology. And the way we kept it battery free was using these proprietary magnets called poly magnets. Um, can you speak on on the magnet, uh, you, the use of magnets? Because I've had a number of questions from from the students regarding that. Yeah, so you know what you typically see with magnets is you see a traditional magnet, north and south poles. Uh, what happens is when you bring the north closer to the south, they attract north versus the north. They they uh, they they don't attract the op the the opposite of that. So what happens is with these magnets that we're using right now, the poly magnets, they they don't attract or repel. They keep switching polarity. And they're a different type of class. They're programmed to do that. They're pre-programmed to accommodate, in our case, a certain frequency, which relates to essential tremors. So when people have a hand tremor, their hand can tremor anywhere between two and eight hertz for essential tremor and Parkinson's disease. It can go up to 13 hertz, but anything after eight is usually, you know, reserved for surgical procedures. So we tackle two to eight hertz. We do that using these proprietary magnets. And what happens is when the magnets are inside the device and your hand is shaking, if your hand is shaking at four hertz, the magnets are going to create a counteracting force to stabilize that hand tremor at the same amount of frequency. It, or if, if it doesn't do it a very, a very, uh, to 100%, it will at least do it to 80 or minimum 60%. Reduction. Wow, I mean, it's, it's just such a crazy thing that you could see you could see a problem and you see that solution and you just go and create it. It's like Tesla we're talking about here. Uh, so we have Mar. Mar had a really good question. You should be able to unmute uh, to ask. Hello, I have a question. In the, um, in the past, when you first like started your for making did you have ever imagined yourself being right now even though I think we're having some microphone difficulties so Mar wanted to know in the past could you have ever imagined that you would have wound up where you're at right now in the past when you began on this journey I don't think so because there was so many different hurdles that we had to overcome and the first you know, the first iteration of the technology looks nothing like the current iteration of the technology. We, um, the team, you know, the founders, they they weren't the same. They didn't act the same. They didn't think the same. The resources were very different. You know, we started this company with a $30,000 grant and 30,000 matching funds from our own pockets. And today the company is valued at around $7 million, you know, uh, USD. Now, um, there's still a very long way to go. And uh, the, the, the first couple of hurdles were definitely not an easy challenge. However, I do think that what we're doing is benefiting people. The market has validated that. And the technology is, you know, exponentially growing at a pace that's, you know, sometimes faster than the healthcare system uh, most of the time, actually. <laughs> so we're we're ready to, we're ready to tackle any problem that comes our way moving forward. Man, that's incredible. That's just such like a, a, a awesome story. Uh, so we have Daniel. Daniel is from Spain. Daniel, you can go ahead and ask your question. Okay. Hello. Hey I there. was wondering if the globe you created was difficult to create, if it's heavy. And if it's expensive to build? That's an awesome question. Okay, so um, you know what? The first version weighed a pound and a half or it weighed 700 grams. Um, the second version, it weighed half a pound, sorry, half a kilo and one pound. And then the third version we're launching now, it weighs 
half a pound uh, or 250 grams. So that's to the weight. Um, was it hard? Yes. The first version took four years to build uh, 10 different prototypes, at least. <laughs> uh, we had to test various different types of uh, types of uh, tremors. We had to test various different products, different prototypes. It was a very heavy lift. The second version took two years to get to market. Um, that was a little bit of a shorter cycle. The reason for that was, you know, we were building it based on the first one and we now had some clinical data. We had customers. We had a lot of feedback. The third one also took almost two years and still in process. I think that on the two year mark, we will be able to launch the product. And the reason why there wasn't a reduction in time between the development of stage two versus the stage three is because the technological lift was significant. Um, you know, making making the devices smaller, lighter, and cheaper by 50% um, is something that we never thought we could do. From version one, where our device costs $1,000 um, in the market, it's now $500 in the market. So we were able to really reduce the costs, really reduce the size, reduce the weight. And yes, it's taken almost eight years, but it's all worth it when you see the over 2000 customers we have now, you know, raving about your product in public. <laughs> That's amazing. Congratulations again. That's such a huge, I mean, that's, that's totally persevering through adversity years and years of, you know, uh, making it work. Uh, we have a question from France. This is Jules. Jules, go ahead and ask. Hi there. Um, did you have, while building this company, a role model or some, someone who really inspired you? We had many inspire many people inspiring us. Good question, Jules. Um, the way that we came across these people that were inspiring us were by joining these fantastic things called accelerators and incubators, where the program's purpose is to excel the company. It's to make sure that the company is able to stand on its feet. And sometimes what happens is you find these programs that are dedicated specifically to medical technology. And in there, you find retired CEOs of massive companies who are, you know, just there for the ride. They're just there to make sure that they can give back to the community, that they're able to, you know, help the entrepreneurs get to the next step or get through the hurdles that they're facing. And those are the true role models, the ones that are giving you the time for free to help you, you know, progress your company with no bias. Amazing, amazing advice. Um, we have a question from Morocco, and this is Gabriel. Gabriel, you had an awesome question. Go ahead and unmute uh, to ask. Um, yes, hello. Um, so my question is, um, how did you raise funds uh, in the beginning? Because I know that you have all these different methods uh to raise funds and I would like to start a company in the US potentially and I really wanted to know how you just started it that's an awesome question Gabriel um, thank you for asking it the first million dollars were all through government based grants and competition prizes so you know once we had the first prototype that was working we ran out of our comfort zone and onto the stages of the different competitions around the world to present what we had found. And, you know, we went everywhere from like Hong Kong to, to San Francisco to you name it. We've uh, Osaka, um, Singapore. It, it's, it's been, it's been uh, very exciting. We've, we've pitched over a hundred competitions Um you know, I would say at least 40 of them in our own backyard here in Toronto. Um, and also there are always these government programs that are, you know, they, they fund research and development. And as a result, you're able to navigate through the programs. Hopefully you'll find a good consultant that can help you if you can't navigate through them yourself and find your first batch of funding. And if not, then, uh, you know, the, the banks are offering very high interest rates right now. 
but you might be able to find your first loan if uh, if you have a good credit back there. That is some invaluable advice right there. Uh, that is wonderful. So our final student question, and guys, if you want to learn more about Steadywear, check out steadywear.com. A uh, very interesting story there and an awesome invention. I suffer from familiar tremors. And so I think that that's, that's really cool to like to see that. Uh, so we have Yvonne and Yvonne is in Spain. You can be our final student question. Go ahead. You had a very good question to ask. Hello. Uh, my question is, that, can you describe your glove in one word? life-changing if you put a hyphen in there uh, <laughs> and uh yeah impactful impactful is a, is a one word one word that we would be able to describe describe the technology with um it's 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 fascinating to see what people are using it for uh initially we had built it to help people you know do basic things like eat drink and write we have customers that are playing the clarinet we have customers that are shaving their own beards uh we have customers that are applying makeup to their to their eyes um, it's it's fascinating to see just as far how far it's come along over the past eight years. Thank you for your work, and it, we can't wait to see where it takes you. Uh, so before we let you go, and I ask this of all of our guests, is there any advice that you could give to these kids as they go off into the world and figure out what they would like to do? Perseverance is key. Um, every every other thing that you know comes your way is a distraction, but if you have a vision, you have a plan, and you have you know, a goal, try your best to keep following it. It will reward you. Amazing, amazing advice. And Emil, thank you so much for everything. And guys, be sure to check out steadywear.com. We have a lot of awesome guests coming up uh, this week and next week for edutainment learning. Uh, definitely check us out on Spotify and, and Apple Music. So before we let you go, Emil, uh, I like to... Um, let everyone unmute and we can say thank you to you for spending time with us today. And then I'll end the meeting for all. So can we all unmute to say thank you to Emil? Thank you. 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 Thank you.